I can't stand people that are like eating a bucket of like hog and dos ice cream. They're like, I'm so fat. And like, they won't work out. They won't change their diet. They won't drink more water. They won't whatever. But they're complaining, complaining, complaining. I'm like, well, you're always going to be in this victim. There is so much wrong with this. Here are three things that come to mind as to why this is absolutely disgusting. For one, she's spewing this rhetoric that people in larger bodies just sit around eating ice cream all day. I mean, it sounds about right to a certain degree. It may not always be ice cream, but it's probably other foods, maybe some Uber Eats in there or something. It could be a whole bunch of stuff. But, I mean, that was pretty accurate. I, am I wrong in saying that? You Most of the time, when you are obese, it's because you're eating a ton of calories and you're doing nothing about it. And then if you're complaining about it on top of that, I don't even know what you're complaining about when you put yourself in the situation that you're complaining about to begin with. I mean, it's one thing to like have an accident and then, you know, be disabled for that reason. But to sit there and complain that you can no longer walk upstairs, fit in the toilet, do anything in general because of the fatness on your body. I don't know how else to say this than you put yourself in that situation. You can't blame anybody else but yourself. But uh, anyway, let's listen to this. Uh, darker complex. I don't know. Like sometimes I get like the ethnically ambiguous people. Sometimes I question it, like where they're from. I mean, granted, always, I always assume they're from America most of the time, you know, and I hate it when people say when they go like, oh, yeah, uh, I'm Mexican or I'm, I'm Irish and I'm this and I'm that. And I'm like, oh, really? That's it. Wow. Like. When did you move to America? And they're like, oh, no, I'm, I'm from America. Like, I was born here. And it's like, oh, so you're, so you're American. Like, can we, you, you're American, dude. I mean, I grant it, yes, your, like, ancestry is from a certain part, but you're American. Rep, rep America. There's nothing wrong with repping America. You know what I'm talking about? I hate it when, because like, you go to any other country on the world, nobody says that. Like, you go to fucking Italy, and you go like, hey, nobody, everybody just assumes you're, Italy, like, you're from Italy, right? But, like, if you ask that person, hey, where are you from? They're going to be like, what are you fucking talking about, dude? I'm fucking eating baguettes right now, dude. Obviously, I'm from Italy. But here in America, it's, like, super favorable for somebody to go like, yeah, I'm British, or, like, I'm fucking, I'm from the UK, or I'm African, or yeah, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican, I'm this, I'm that. But it's like everybody you talk to, they're all American. But it's just, like, super cool to just say you're from a different part of wherever, dude. You know, whatever, man. Let's just listen to what she has to say. She's spewing this rhetoric that people in larger bodies just sit around eating ice cream all day. For one, that's not true. And number two, who are you to judge if somebody does or doesn't do? Who are you to judge somebody that's judging somebody that what they do and what they do not do? What are you talking about? How do you know? What is this even line of questioning, dude? Isn't she in her interview? Who is that? Khloe Kardashian? I don't know who the fuck that was. But... It, isn't that an interview, dude? Like, it, are you not okay to talk about whatever you want to talk about? Isn't this like a public platform? I don't know. You're you're okay, you're totally okay with dispousing any views you have. Why is it not okay for that individual to do the same thing? What are you talking about? Who are you to say something is insanely, <laughs> it's insanely hypocritical given the fact that you're doing the exact same thing just in a different direction. Ice cream all day. For one, that's not true. And number two, who are you to judge if somebody does or doesn't do that? Me, I can do it. You know why I can judge? Because I can't. What you do about it she wouldn't be judging the thin person if they were doing it because that's hashtag self-care i would uh, it depends if, if i went over to a dude's house and that dude was just sitting down on a lazy boy watching something and he was just i got a tub of ice cream i'm judging that dude bro i'm like what the fuck happened to you what would your dog just die why are you sitting on the couch eating a hog and dos ice cream dude that's <laughs> Yeah, I'll be judging you, dude. Hell yeah. Maybe not to the same degree. If the dude was like 300, 400 pounds, I'd be judging him like way more critically because I'd be like, dude, you're going to die. That's crazy. Your insulin must be like through the roof right now. Actually, matter of fact, let me just see if there's a hole. That's what I'd be but saying. But two, she's coming from an incredibly privileged position, which she seems to have lost sight of. But why does it matter if somebody comes from a privileged position? Does that mean that you can't speak on stuff because you come from a privileged position? I hate when people have to bring up this like, this weird metric that we have in today's like, granted, I kind of understand where you're coming from in the sense of like, you can't relate because, but like in this particular scenario, it doesn't really make sense because usually it's like rich people shouldn't talk about poor people problems because rich people have no idea what it's like to be poor. I can kind of understand that one, but to sit there and say rich people shouldn't talk about fat people because they're not fat or because they're not because they're not in the situation like what do you what where is that coming from exactly last but not least she's spewing this fat phobic hate in 2019 but she launched her good american brand which was size inclusive in 2016. how can you talk about people in larger bodies like this but have a body positive brand yes capitalism dude making money wherever you can dude might as well incorporate some people but then again plus size nowadays it does ah, man somebody told me that like regular plus plus sizes 
straight sizes consist of like small, medium, large, and I guess that goes up to 2x because that's still kind of within the straight sizes, which is crazy. I never thought about it like that, but sure. But then like once you go above that, then you start getting into plus sizes, and I'm just like, really? 2x? Like, okay, there could be a guy that's like 2x naturally, I guess, but even that's like kind of weird to say because I've never met a dude that was 2x naturally, bro. But Two, like three, four, five X. Okay, that makes sense. But two X to me, you're kind of big as shit if you're two X and that's insane to me. But um, what was that? Oh yeah, just because somebody has, just because somebody is selling a product that is incorporating a particular genre of a person doesn't mean they can't have an opinion on that particular demographic of person or thing. That doesn't make sense. You know what I'm talking about? It's like somebody selling a car and. Like, they actively dislike these particular types of cars. They still they still sell them. It is what it is. Like, a car dealership's still going to sell whatever the fuck. It's all about what you want at the end of the day. But they can still have an opinion on it. Oh, yeah. That's why. Because you see the money in the body positive yeah. movement, and you're trying to cash in on it. Absolutely, dude. Playing two sides of the same coin, bro. What you going to do about it, huh? What you going to do? I don't really understand. I know that uh, Chloe or Kim or whoever these Kardashians, I'm not really kept up on any of that stuff, dude. I stopped paying attention when Kanye got divorced with his wife because I do kind of like Kanye, not for what he said. Well, I guess for what he says in the sense of like his music. I like his music a lot. I know he's not like the most lyrically inclined individual when it comes to the uh, the music he produces, but I really love like almost all his songs. Um, but I don't like the Jewish stances he has. You know, I think Jewish guys are cool. I have a whole bunch. I have like two Jewish friends. One of them's Asian. This is the best video I've seen today. Why? It was so healing for my inner child to, 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 to watch this young woman find a gorgeous dress. You know, she didn't have to settle. She looks like she's off the cast of like Saturday Night Fever, dude. This is a gorgeous dress, man. For who? Looking like Ursula. To watch this young woman find a gorgeous dress. You know, she didn't have to settle. She found this gorgeous dress in a gorgeous color and to hear the entire room celebrate her. So it was a bunch of black ladies, right? It's not like a whole bunch of black ladies. Black ladies are always there to amp you up, dude. That's that's a fact. I always see that so so many times, dude. I don't know why it's like that, man. But and they like, isn't it weird that I always see like white people clapping and I see like other black like, black people do they they do other noises, right? I don't think I've ever seen a black dude clap in my entire life. Well, <laughs> hold up now. <laughs> Hold up now, okay, hold up. I have seen black dudes clap, but not like that. Not with their hands. You know what I'm talking about, dude? I think you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, dude, to sit there and say that this is satisfying your inner child because this woman found a dress because she's... Dude, that woman was massive, okay? I'm not even trying to be mean about it. That woman was, like, very, very obese. And when you are that size, I feel like it's very impractical for you to find almost anything that's going to fit you in general because clothes are so incredibly dynamic on how they fit people that the chances of you finding a, a piece of clothing that will fit you at that size is going to be so, like you're playing the lottery anytime you go outside and try to find clothes at that size. For me, I could probably find most clothes that fit me depending on where I'm going, but for that person right there, it's gonna be very unlikely. So I guess it is like a, woohoo, yeah, this is great. I found a, finally found a piece of clothing that fits me, but I'm also looking at it and it's like, this is so sad that you have to celebrate in this particular type of way to find a piece of clothes that fits you at all it, when you could have easily alleviated this problem at any point in your life and lost some weight and then you would have been able to find even more clothes that are, I guess, like that. I don't know. It didn't really look that good to me. But sure, you could have found that blue dress thing and then you would have been able to find it in a lower size and you would have been healthier. Okay, anyway. Anyway. Poor heart, wh whooping heart. Oh my God. <sighs> I loved it. I loved it so much. Like, you know, we are encouraged. I'm sure she'd have heard her entire life that she doesn't get to have these moments because she's fat, because fat people were not. I, I hate this. I hate it. I hate it so bad. I hate it so bad that these people look at it like that. Oh, this she was probably told her whole life that she can't have these moments because she's fat. Dude, it's not like it's a debilitating condition that you can't get rid of the fucking fat. Just eat less. I don't even know, like, why are you even bringing this up as if it's, like, a claim to at all? Oh, my God, she's been told her whole life. Dude, this woman is not, like, dying in the sense of, like, this is this one and done. It's over. <laughs> she can't lose this weight. Bro, it's, it's not as hard as you think it is. She could have easily lost the weight, become healthier, and then found dresses that would fit her at any, like, at the lower sizes. I don't know why you have to keep bringing this shit up, like, oh, my God, this is so amazing. I can't believe she found a clothe. Dude. Get your get fucking over it. Like nobody's gonna help you out of this realm. You are stuck, okay? 
And in order for you to get unstuck, guess what you have to do? It's not anybody else's problem. It's your problem because you are stuck. I'm not stuck. You. So if you're stuck, you can easily push the boulder out the way and lose some fucking weight. I don't know what else to fucking tell you. There's no other way to say it than that. You should be the one that decides if you want to lose weight. Now, if you want to be fat and you want to live your life on hard mode and just sit there and find clothes that you can't fit into and just be permanently depressed and have people tell you that you're just debilitatingly fat, I, dude, it's up to you. I can't help that. Allowed to be the main characters of our lives, you know, we're constantly encouraged, we're constantly relegated, we're not allowed to have these moments. And it's not about like not being allowed to have these moments. I don't even know what you mean by that, dude. It's not like who is first of all, who is allowing anybody to have these moments in general? Is it God Himself? Like he has to come down and bestow upon you the allowance of having moments? What are you even talking about on that particular front? But then, like, it's not about having to be allowed, you're taking yourself away from the circumstances. It's like somebody going like this, like somebody has like a saw, okay? And they just sit down one day and just go, you know what? Like, I don't need this anymore. Fuck this shit. And just start sawing off their leg and just take their leg and just toss it out the window, right? And just sit down. And then when the next month starts and there's the fucking marathon and you're like, I need to run this marathon. And you're sitting there in your wheelchair looking at everybody else with legs running and just kind of going like, ah, oh, this is fucking, this is gross. All these legged people having to run. I can't believe this shit. This is fucking gross gross and disgusting. Uh, they should incorporate more unlegged people to run. Yeah, they, they, how dare they have legs? And it's like, bro, why would you cut off your own legs? And it's, you know, it's really weird too. In this particular setting, it doesn't even really make sense. This analogy doesn't even make sense because you could just lose weight and regrow legs. You understand in this particular sense. Um, I don't know if that was like re really un easily understandable, but the point I'm making is if you want to have these experiences, the only person holding you back is yourself. You're literally doing it to yourself. So when you have these like, oh my God, this is so amazing. I can't believe that people, you know, like all oh, fat people have to deal with this all day. You don't have to though. You know that you could not be fat, right? It's not like it's, there's, that's, that's the only option for you, right? You know that, right? It's not like you don't have to deal with that. And then when you sit there and complain about it, I'm just sitting there like, who, what am I supposed to do? You're, you're big for your own reason. I'm, I'm sorry that you ate eight hot pockets before this video started. I, I didn't. I ate chicken breast this morning. I'm not even playing with you. I ran out of eggs. So I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to eat chicken breast. I ate chicken breast and I had a, a, a this wrap that I didn't eat fully. Yeah. Can you believe that? Can you fucking believe that? You don't have to though. You know that? You don't have to. You can just eat what I ate and not eat the 14 Hot Pockets. She's having the moment she deserves. Why does she deserve it? Why? Because she went through a lifetime of just like living on heart what do you i hate it when these people say this word like you deserve you deserve you deserve why does she deserve anything why is that even the thing because she's fat who put her in this situation so she's taken away her own sir she's taken away her own ability to do stuff and because of all the trials and tribulations of being fat she now deserves something from doing that okay i guess that's like somebody committing a crime and then going to jail and then getting out because there was like you know like they deserve to get out just because why do you why you killed somebody right what are you talking about obligated we're not allowed to have these moments and here she's having the moment she deserves deserves and it's just so supportive and loving and healing you've been drinking some kool-aid dude why your lips look like that why, is this like an overline or something like that? Or maybe she has a lot of lip capacity. For me personally, I don't have a lot of lips. And I know that I don't have a lot of lips. And I remember one time kissing black ladies, dude, is tough, man. Because like you don't know. I've met so many. But I, black ladies have bigger lips, right? Like I've met a lot of black ladies with, with enlarged lips. And, it's, and I've only ever dated black women, right? Not like. Not because I'm like addicted to black ladies or anything like that. Just because, you know, when you when you start dating and you throw out your your little fish thing and you start reeling things in, you're like, I'll take anything. Like whatever it is, right? Black ladies. Always black ladies for me. I don't know. I'm like a default snow bunny. And when a black lady kisses me with all those lips, it's like I don't know what to do, right? Because it's all over my face. I have no lips and I feel like I can't properly reciprocate because I don't have enough. And my lip capacity is like, I don't know, like maybe it's... Is it because I'm Caucasian? I don't know. My genetics just dictate that I don't have a lot of lip capacity. I would like to have more lips, especially on the top, because the bottom one's okay, but the top one almost non-existent. Anyway. And it's just so supportive and loving and healing. Can you imagine, and can you imagine just celebrating, like this is like the highlight of your life, seeing a fat lady at a Macy's, having a whole bunch of black ladies clap and scream and have fun about a fat lady.
buying a dress? What is, like, what is, your life must suck a lot of dicks if that's really what it comes down to, dude. Like, I, I don't know, man. Uh, I just, to me personally, it don't seem like that's a pretty high standard. And I just loved it. Okay. I just want more of that all the time, please. <laughs> Can't you just, like, lose weight and then have more of it like that instead of just, like, hoping that one day... Like, it's... You ever see those videos when, like, dads come home from, like, war or, like, their service duties for, like, a, a six, seven, eight, nine months and they come home and they're, like, at their kid's graduation they hug their kids, like, beautiful, right? Or, like, dogs. Dogs will see the fucking guy come home and it's like, oh, it's beautiful because the dog knows who it is and it's fucking awesome, right? That makes sense. But, like, you watch a lot of those videos because a lot of people in the armed services coming back, right? Okay. But, like, to sit there and try to look up, like, oh, let me just look up real quick... Um, uh, fat lady fitting into dress celebration. You're not going to find one video, bro. You're not going to really, it's like me when I try to watch time travel movies. There's not a lot of them. And I get so upset because I love time travel movies. I like the idea of time travel movies. I'll even watch the really suck butter ones because I'm addicted to them. I love them. And I love early 2000s rom-coms too, but there's not a lot of them in the sense of I've already watched all of them. So it's like now when I try to find some, it's like I'm finding ones from like Bollywood. You know, I have to watch the ones from like India that I can't even relate to. And because every guy there has a mustache and uh, they don't, I don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. There's always zooms. This zooms in like every 10 seconds or something like that. It doesn't matter. The point I'm making is this is like, you want more of this and I know why because it's not a lot to begin with, dude. I can relate to that. Just loved it. I just want more of that all the time, please. <laughs> I want more money too, bro. Give me money. That's what I need, bro. You see how unrealistic that is? <laughs> I'm, I feel bittersweet about this because obviously I, I loved it and I love it and I want more of it. But it's bitter because why is this not the norm? Because fucking clothing items for fat people, it's unrealistic. What do you mean it's not the norm? Like I... Because of reality? I, what are you like? What are you talking about? That's like somebody saying like, why is it not the norm? that I can't have a bajillion dollars all the time because you didn't fucking earn it because you it's not possible for you to earn that because that's not how society works. You can't just have things that happen to you because what are you talking about? Why would this, why would you, what do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? Why is this not the norm? Like think about it for like more than 10 seconds because fat people are fat and clothes struggle to fit around them. Oh, uh? Uh, and then also, there's not like a smorgasbord of black ladies around you at any given point in time that are going to whoop whoop you anytime you put on a dress. I don't know. It seems oddly specific. It seems like it's, it's, it's unrealistic. Why is this not the norm? How hard would it be for this to be the norm? It, very hard. Uh, very hard, actually. Super ridiculously hard, matter of fact. Like what you're asking for, like you would just need like an Asian tailor following you wherever you went. That would, like, you walk into a Macy's, and then you just have him, he, he's invisible, by the way. He is, he's got the cloak on from Harry Potter. You know what I'm talking about? And he's falling behind you, and anytime you put on the dress, he has to, like, speed work and, like, try to contour to your body. Like, oh, shit. Oh, my God. But sometimes it's not going to work, because maybe the clothes you wear are really, really tight-fitting, and it's not going to fit anyway. So it's, like, fucked. Either way. So even in this particular scenario, it's not even going to work that often. So, yeah, no, it's not going to work. It's just, it, it, what do you mean? How is it not? Like, what do you, why do you want this particular thing to happen? Like, out of all the things that you want to happen, what? One thing that I would like to happen is like having door handles that are better to grasp onto because sometimes door handles suck. You know what I'm talking about? Like really heavy door handles. Like what is, what is why are handles so hard sometimes to like pull open? And I don't know. I have a place that I go to where I live and the door handle doesn't even work. You have to like push on the glass, right? Because the door handle, I don't know. I don't even know how the door handles don't even work, but it doesn't work. Like when you push on the door handle, it like kind of moves in. It doesn't make any sense. Just to celebrate every body type but you don't want to celebrate every body type and nobody okay maybe we okay you want to set why though why do you want to celebrate every body type like if i go in and i like put on jeans at a uh, uh, at a macy's or something and i come outside is there gonna have to be like are they gonna hire people to celebrate me and having jeans that fit what if they don't fit and i don't like them and they celebrate it Woo! this is oh my god it's so great your jeans i'm like no i don't like them oh okay yeah well we take it back we t when you come back with another pair we'll do that here yeah, but it's not even authentic because you're hiring somebody to do it. You get what I'm talking about? Kind of like when you hire somebody to listen to you and they don't actually ever like really listen to what you're saying. It's not authentic. I want you or it's kind of like when you like for me, when I want to have sex, I want you to want to have sex too, right? Because I want it to be reciprocal. I want it to be like, yes, we are both wanting to do this simultaneously. 
teamwork make the dream work. I don't want you to want to do it. I don't want you to do it because you feel like an obligation or you feel like I'm owed something. I want you to feel it. I want you to be in it. I want you to be fucking on board, right? You get what I'm talking about? I don't want it to be like a, okay, whip it out. You know, I don't know. I don't want, no, I don't want that. I, don't, I want you to be like on it. I want you to be like, this is, I fucking, I love penis. Penis is, oh my God, I love your penis. It's so great. I love that like little curve thing that you have on yours, right? That's awesome. I love that shit. You know, that's what I want you to do. And I don't want it to be like a, like a task or like a job. You know, I want to, I, I understand it's not going to be all the time. And I'm one of those people that are just like, no, I don't want to do it if that's the case. Like, well, I'll just wait. It's okay. I'll wait. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not really that of a picky person, to be honest. Anyway for this to be the norm just to celebrate every body type for them all to have their main character moments because we are we are all the how many do you think we're owed though like how many me bro i i don't understand why people are so this i can't even believe she used that word dude that main character moment where are we nowadays where we even talk like this like i feel like if you go back like 100 years ago and you told somebody like hey man have you ever had that main character moment that dude's gonna be like on his porch whittling like a horse and he's gonna be like he's chewing on tobacco and he's gonna be starving to death because all his crops are dead and his wife died six months ago and his kids are like on death's door and they're playing in a well and he's just sitting there going what'd you say what huh? what'd you say huh? main character what's that what would you hey you know, can you can you mind going to the store and pick me up one potato for the take this horseshoe as as compensation that's, I feel like nowadays, like standards have changed so drastically that we can say words like main character moment and people go, yes, queen, this is true. I, I am the main character. How many main characters do you think there are, by the way? You know, there's only one of those, right? Or maybe two at most, depending on what, what show or movie or game you're playing. You know, I don't know. Is this like cooperative? Is everybody a main character? That kind of takes away from the fact that main characters even exist. If everybody's a main character, then nobody's a main character. Then fundamentally, everybody's an NPC again, right? Because that's like not how that works. You understand? Like if everybody five, like on a scale of one to 10, if everybody's a five, that's average. But if everybody's a 10, that means 10 is now five because that's average. You understand? In the same way that like if the average length for a penis is five to six inches, but tomorrow we woke up and suddenly the average length for a penis is nine inches, that would be the average now. You understand the same way that if everybody's the main character, then nobody's the main character because now that's the new norm. Suddenly, the, 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 the standards have changed. I don't know. I feel like I'm talking about something that's completely fucking irrelevant. But the point I'm making is it's so it's so weird to hear somebody go like, we need main character moments. Ah, really? What do you mean by that? Like, I've never once thought I need to go to a changing room and hope somebody cheers me on for putting my pant leg in correctly. Type. For them all to have their main character moments. Because we are. We are all the main characters of our own See, lives. It, but it's not... Okay, maybe for your own lives. But I don't think many people look at it like that. I feel like that's a really weird way of looking at your life. This is, I'm the main character of my story? I guess. All right. Why can't I tell my friend that recently lost weight that she looks gorgeous? Nice it hair. depends. Did you ever tell her she looked gorgeous before she lost weight? I don't know that I've ever used that exact word. Here's the thing, if you've always called your friend gorgeous, then there's no reason to stop. Why do you look like that, dude? You look like a fucking killer. Doesn't he look like a killer? This, like, weird smile he's got? I'm sorry, I'm just like, the shirts he's wearing are just so weird, too, man. Like, where are you shopping? I feel like this is something that Charlie Sheen would wear in Two and a Half Men. Looked gorgeous before she lost weight? I don't- Yeah, so you can't- con So if your friend lost weight, and you want to compliment them on their weight loss- you shouldn't do that unless you had complimented them previously on them being fat or like some other facet of their life, which is like, I don't, okay, like what if I just didn't think that they were really attractive at that particular point in time? Doesn't that take away the entire point of complimenting somebody if like you thought they look good here, but then like the something changed and then suddenly like, wouldn't that, I feel like that would just devalue the compliment at that point. Because if you think I look good all the time, no matter what, then does it matter if your words, your words don't fundamentally don't even matter anymore because you just think I look good regardless. You understand? Like it's, I don't know. It just, to me, it doesn't make sense. I would much rather have the words be more meaningful in the sense of like, you think that I look good here rather than all the time because they're more, they impact more here. 
You understand? Like, I don't know. It's like getting shot with a BB gun compared to getting shot with, like, a 50 cal. You understand? Like, the, it's more condensed and it's better. It, I don't know. I don't know. Fucking, you get what I'm saying, though. I don't know that I've ever used that exact word. Here's the thing. If you've always called your friend gorgeous, then there's no reason to stop because your friend lost weight. But, like, what if you just appreciate them losing weight and bettering themselves and they genuinely look better when they lost the weight is that just not cool i can't do that because i didn't compliment them when they were 400 fucking pounds but i thought that when they were 400 pounds it was not good and unhealthy and i didn't think they were attractive how does this even make fucking sense the reason why i'm complimenting them now is because i genuinely think they look and they are better in the sense of physicality health wise and aesthetically so like why would i why would i have to preference that with did i hmm you know my friend did lose did I compliment this guy when he lost, when he was like 400 pounds? I don't think I did. So I guess I, no, I'm not going to compliment him. I'm not going to, why are you thinking like that first? And that's weird. That's a weird way of thinking about something. But two, nobody thinks like that. That's fucking weird. Why? Are, okay. Okay. But if you've never described your friend as gorgeous before, and then you do after she's lost weight, she's going to take that as a compliment on her weight loss. Yeah, no shit. No fucking shit. Duh. Duh, bro. I fucking hope so. I'm complimenting her on the fucking weight loss. Not on you thinking that she's a gorgeous person. Yeah, I think she's gorgeous now. Like, you do realize people get more attractive when they lose weight, right? Okay. And is that such a bad thing? Quite frankly, yeah, because commenting on somebody's weight changes, even subliminally, can be really harmful. It's like, bro, th these these are unrealistic standards on how people should react or act in, in inside society or around other people. Do you honestly think that people are going to, like, backtrack themselves and see what dialogue choices they picked when they complimented that person nine years ago? Nobody's doing that. And then also... I don't give a fuck. Why should I have the care about the subliminal messages that I might be sending to this person when I say that I like their shoes or I like that their gut isn't as shapely as it once was? Okay, bro. I, 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 nobody's thinking like that. Nobody is thinking like that. That just is unrealistic. Like, these people are not centering their beliefs in, in society at all. In reality, this shit is unrealistic. It's unrealistic, dude. There's no way that anybody's gonna take these words and go, you know what? And now, when I compliment somebody, I'm gonna make sure that it's like very, very soft complimentary. And I gotta make sure that I make sure that I compliment that person. Now, another point in time when I said this and this and this, because I don't want to like inadvertently have them be shamed subconsciously. What are you fucking talking about, dude? Who's the, who are you? But it's just a compliment. True. Yeah, one that you never gave her before she lost weight. So? The message she's going to receive is that she is now more gorgeous, or finally, classifiably gorgeous. True, dude. Thank God. Uh, she lost weight, right? She lost some weight. So, there we go. Now she's gore a uh, gis Gorgeous. Because she lost weight. But that's not my intention. But that's my intention, dude. Hell yeah, you, got, you lost weight. Good for you. Go get it, sis. You look great. Slay queen edges. You look great. Hashtag... Pretty girl summer. Hashtag losing the gut. Hashtag nice hair. I don't know. Whatever. Impact over intent. Your friend is going to walk away from this conversation thinking. But it should be about the intent. Like impact over intent. I can't judge the impact of a statement before I say the statement. I mean, you can have an assumption on how it's going to hit depending on the person you're talking to. But the intent should be the main thing that you're worried about because if your intention of what they say, okay, is like, sure, it should be more about the context of the statement. Because if you say something that's ra that's random, no context behind it at all, it's going to hit weird. But, like, you should be worrying about, okay, I don't know, bro. This is dumb. This is fucking dumb. I, I don't even know why I'm explaining this shit. This is a fucking dumbass dialogue tree, bro. Get the fuck out of my face. Get the fuck out of here, bro. That you think she's worth more because she takes up less space. Yes. And that's pretty screwed up. Okay, well, I mean, I think it's screwed up that you think it's... I think it's screwed up that you think it's screwed up that I think that it's not screwed up that she lost weight and she looks better now. What do you... What's your point? What's your point? You have no validity to your statement at all. You're just making words up right now. I guess you're right. No, uh, no, don't, don't agree with that guy. Don't agree with him. Don't agree with purple shirt man. He's wrong. What do you mean, I guess you're right? Don't see that point. Argue back. No, bro. That's not how it works. I genuinely think she's healthier and she has a better attitude on life and a better ability to judge food and she has better dietary decisions and she's active and she looks better. That's why. Not because I'm like overly thinking about that one time I didn't compliment her that one day when she was like 400 fucking pounds and I didn't genuinely think she was gorgeous. <laughs> Can you fucking fight back? 
compliment your friends, but make sure the compliment is in their best interest. That's okay, bro. I'm not, dude. Get the fuck out of here, bro. What the fuck are you talking about? Compliment your friends, but make sure the compliment is in their best fucking interest. Dude, okay, man, you're fucking weird. Nobody's doing that shit. Nobody's fucking doing that shit. Anything that they might even receive as a compliment on weight loss is not. But how do you know that? How do you fucking, what if their intention was to lose weight and they thought that they would, they look better when they lose weight and me complimenting them and telling them that you still look beautiful while they are fat is actually more derogatory than me complimenting them on the weight loss that took effort to lose. How do you know? How can you say this? Oh, oh, you man, what are you fucking talking about? Ugh. The hardest part about growing up plus size was always my relationship to feeling feminine. I grew up with pop stars and Disney Channel actresses as my icons, but these were the ones who actually looked like me. <laughs> Damn, dude, that's fucking tough, bro. <laughs> that's tough, bro. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, dude. When you, I mean, you, what, what was the Disney stars that she said? Hannah Montana? Who's this? Oh, that's fucking, um, fuck, who is that girl, dude? Uh, I forgot her name, man. Actresses as and then that's the girl from Tangled? Tangled? I don't watch a lot of Disney fucking shit, dude. I watched Hannah Montana when I was growing up because I was, like, cool or whatever to watch Hannah Montana. But, anyway. My icons, but these were the ones who actually looked like me. Yeah, your parents should be there to try to help you lose weight because, um... I, nobody wants to be a fat kid. Being a fat kid is terrible. Having fat children that can't run and properly walk and are constantly out of breath, it's tough. Given the fact that when you're a children, you want to do all those things. You want to run around. You want to expel energy. And when you are physically incapable of doing those things, you are actually impeding the growth of your child. And not even to mention all the bullying and terrible stuff that's going to be happening to your kid at school. So, no, it's it's terrible missed out on a lot of the core girlhood memories like sharing clothes with my friends yeah, you should have had your mom your dad somebody in your family member that, that should have told you to lose some weight or not told you to lose weight because i feel like that's counterproductive but because you're a child you're like you tell your kid to lose weight the kids are gonna look at you like what the fuck are you talking i'm a child dude i don't even know how to make my own bed what are you talking about i don't even know what a microwave is and you expect that dude to lose weight now so you should be there contouring your kid's diet probably don't talk about it to them because it's like that's irrelevant information for them you might as well just do it yourself. Help them lose weight instead of. And then going shopping with my friends because I just made it awkward for everyone. The amount of See, that's tough, bro. That's fucking tough because it's like when you're a kid, when you're a children, dude, you can't, you, like, you, can't, you can't really control that. You're just going to have to sit there and just, just eat torment of not being able to buy clothes or not being able to like do things that other kids can do. The amount of times that I remember we used to play this game called Manhunt. Manhunt is basically just a cooler version of Tag. And um, I remember so many times where I would be a person that I could run down the street. I could climb buildings. I don't recommend doing that. But I could climb buildings and I could fucking, you know, do things that uh, this other kid I knew couldn't do. And we would play Manhunt. This dude would always be tagged within the first five minutes of the game. Because whereas I would get three, four, five times the distance away compared to what this kid would do, he would always be, and he's big as fuck, you can't hide behind a tree when your guts are hanging out the side, so this dude would always be tagged, and I thought it was so terrible, bro, because it's like, I would come back after 10 minutes of playing the game, because they could never catch me, and they'd be like, yeah, I got it, right, and then I see him, like, yeah, bro, you're good, you're good, I'm like, dude, damn, bro, you're fat as shit, dude, like, and I see his fucking feet going like this, because he's got so much fat that his fucking body is not proportioned correctly, and every time he takes a step, it's like, physically inducing arthritis onto his fucking ankles and shit like that and i'm just saying like this is sad as fuck bro this kid is always gonna just like i don't even know why you're playing this game dude just go inside you know like i don't you know it's tough and he couldn't do anything about that because he was like 11 like what can he do he can't do anything he's gonna have to sit there and just i don't know like I, I, there was nothing he could do like that was it like i don't know hide inside your house nobody can get you there i guess but it was tough, man. It was tough seeing that. And it's not the kid's fault. Like I said, it's the parents. The kid, Sometimes parents just don't give a fuck about you. And that's really tough. And I understand that it might be difficult to look at your kid as an imperfect human being that you're not, you're not doing something right about. But sometimes it might be like really beneficial to look upon your children and go, that dude's kind of big and he can't do things. And I need to him. I'm, I want him to lead a successful life because like, keep in mind these are critical periods of your youth when you're going through your youth and you can't do certain things that's gonna like really fuck you up later on in the future you understand anyway
times that I was told, don't put any effort into your appearance. I mean, it's like putting lipstick on a pig. Like every other preteen in the 2010s, I was obsessed with watching YouTubers and I would watch makeup tutorials and learn about fashion, but I never applied any of that to my life. That's weird, dude. I, I, was, I was growing up on YouTube in the early 2010s, dude. I never watched makeup YouTubers. So that's weird, huh? Because I didn't want to draw more attention to myself. No one famous, no one influential, no one that my friends were looking up to ever looked like me. And for so long, I thought there was something so wrong with looking the way that I did. That yeah, that there is something wrong with the way you're looking. I, I, there's, what are you talking about? Like obesity is literally killing you. Like it's, it's just, it's expediting your lifespan every single day. It's literally unhealthy. So yeah, there is something wrong with that. Like it's not good. It's not a good thing. It's not. So there is, a, I mean, I get it. Like when you're a child, you might not think this. You're an adult. Right? You're an adult now. I don't know how you carry the same thought process through to your an adulthood. You should realize that this is not, is not good. Is not good. That said, this is my very first time doing a full face of makeup on myself. I bought all the things that I see all the girls using and feel like I'm going through something that most people did when they were teenagers for the very first time. I never did that. I never, I never applied makeup ever. Uh, no, hmm. I've never applied makeup, but I've had somebody apply makeup to me. But uh, no, I've never done that growing up, never. I avoid getting my makeup done because those flimsy wooden chairs stress me out because I always think what's gonna happen when I actually sit in a chair like Man, that. Man, this is fucking crazy, dude. Get the fuck out of here. That's, a, that's, a, that's tough as fuck, dude. You're literally talking about, I don't wanna do my makeup because I might break the chair. I'm over here expecting her. I'm, I'm over here expecting her to say that people were gonna judge her. Maybe she was gonna take up too much makeup because her face is too big or that she was gonna be insecure about the makeup. Nah, she really went for the, I might break the chair. I can't, that's just, it's just, I can't believe this, dude. I can't, like, I, I feel like these people are non-ironically funny as shit. That is hilarious, man. You're really out here thinking you might break chairs be, and you, like, so you just don't do your makeup. That's crazy, bro. I, I can't believe that. That's hilarious, dude. That's unironically the most hilarious shit I've heard all day today, bro. That's crazy as fuck. I can't believe that. chairs stress me out because i always think what's gonna happen when i actually sit in a chair like that that, so that should be a cute of like losing fucking weight dude that's that's serious that is some serious shit that is crazy you you that should be like y'all if i'm if you're thinking about breaking chairs i just think that maybe you should be thinking about losing weight I, personally speaking I, I just i don't know how you can look at that and not go maybe i should lose weight that is crazy to me dude i can't I, i'm sorry that's crazy much more thinking and processing that goes into everything trying to exist as a plus size person in this day and age i've lived a whole life of avoiding those things that took some extra thinking and some extra help and some extra tutorials because i believed that because of my size i was less valuable it's a really hard mentality to break out of but i'm 23 i want to reclaim my femininity and this is the beginning when i was you could have just lost weight uh, i mean like i don't even know what this has to do with femininity i guess like when you're fat you can't do makeup or stuff like that i uh, maybe i don't fucking know dude i'm not a feminine person organically i guess so i don't really understand it but hey man i don't know bro but that joke about the i mean it wasn't a joke but that shit about the chair was hilarious man i'm gonna keep it a buck with you that shit was I'm great 23 i want to reclaim reclaim my it hashtag and femininity this is the beginning. when i was growing up me being happy was not important me losing weight. Damn, that's a tough ass picture, dude. Damn. Who the fuck took this picture of you, bro? <laughs> this fucking crazy ass picture, dude. And take a picture with this butterfingers, dude. This shit will be fucking hilarious. You're big as shit. Take this picture with this butterfucker. Oh, Bruce, my bad, baby Bruce. And being skinny was what was important. I started getting fat. Bro, when what I was is this fuck? What are you? Why is this so awkward? And being skinny. Why'd you take this video of yourself in a car smiling, dude? This is weird as shit was what was important you know I it should be losing weight is like super important if you're if you grow up fat it's gonna be like very hard for you in the future to try to lose weight because like you grew up with the idea of being fat was okay or at least your parents like instilled that value in you maybe even if it was like subconscious because they didn't help you lose that weight in any way that is terrible but like being an adult you should try to at least dismantle that in some way because it's not good and then you end up being here which is like people just saying no it's okay that i'm fat no it's no it's fine i don't have to lose weight no it's not it's not a good thing to be fat getting fat when i was like seven years old and from then on it was just how can we make her skinny because there's no way she can live in this fat body i barely had any friends i didn't really talk to people I tried to just be as insignificant as possible because I didn't deserve to take up any space in the body that I was living in. 
because my body was not a good body in the eyes of my parents and people close to me. And society, probably, and, like, nature and other things like that. It's just, like, it's, like, really not intuitive in any way to be really, really big because it's, like, going to physically impede everything that you do. But, all right. I mean, you're an adult, right? You're an adult now. Like, I get it when you were a kid. You couldn't do anything about it. But, like, when you're an adult, why do you keep – why do you still keep this mentality? Why can't you just, like <sighs> – Every day I worried that I would have diabetes and that I would <laughs> Damn, dude. Is this apple bag per scale? Oh my god, dude. Damn. Dude, you you to sit there and be I I feel like these people are just like they should be on stage, dude. I was worried every day that I would get diabetes is hilarious, man. <laughs> Yo, I, I don't know, bro. That's hilarious. Parents and people close to me. Every day I worried that I would have diabetes and that I would just die and my life would be over because I was fat and I wasted so much time not living. And I'm so sad for that girl who didn't get to have anything. I agree in the sense of like you shouldn't you should live life while you can 100 percent. Some people wait very, very long time to like get that fulfillment or like they ultimately spend their life waiting to that one point and they never get it because they die too early or something happens. Right. So you should be living life. Definitely. But to sit there and say that there's like, oh, I'm going to live my life now because weight loss is not sustainable or like there's no point because my body is already the good body or some shit like that. I, I understand. I do. I understand. But you're ignoring the fact that your life could be substantially better. And the process of you talking about losing weight, I don't feel like that is the thing that's going to like hold you back from living life. That could be an enhancer. That could be like going to the gym or walking more or being more aerobic or like understanding nutrition and eating proper foods that are going to make you ultimately feel better that's i feel like that's better i feel like that's living life i feel i don't think that's like a holding your life i don't think it's like a, a save point i don't think it's like you stopping things and then just trying to focus on this no i think that's like a progressive thing i think you're growing when you do that i don't think you should be looking at it as like i'm stopping my life or I'm putting my life on hold to lose weight. You should be looking at it as like a, this is me enhancing my life, growing in a more positive direction. You understand? I, uh, it's a bad mentality to look at this shit. Because she was told she deserved nothing. Who told you that, dude? Who? Is it like a subconscious type of thing? Like not, nobody actually said those words, but like you were hearing it from other people subconsciously? I wish someone had told me that I was allowed to be happy. What do you, man, what do you like? The, you want like the Goodwill hunting moment? They like got Robin Williams at the therapy meeting and telling you it's not your fault. Is that what you want? Dude, that shit doesn't happen, okay? I don't know what to tell you. Like, it, you shouldn't be relying on other people to try to satiate your hunger for desirability or to satiate your hunger to satisfy you in a way that's meaningful to try to get you through life. It, because like, it's not sustainable ultimately. Because like, that person may not always be there. That person, something might happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just not always, it's not sustainable. It should be, it's much better to have that fulfillment within yourself or get it from like yourself in some way. You shouldn't be relying on other people. It shouldn't be about, I, I just needed somebody to say that. Granted, when you were a kid, maybe, but like, dude, you're a fucking grown woman now, man. It shouldn't be something like, I just really wish I had a person do that shit for me. Grow the fuck up. You're a grown woman, dude. Get it for yourself. Is I, I don't know why these people have the like they say this shit and I understand it. I do. I get it. Surface level, it's fine. But like deep down, the meanings behind this shit are really, really obtuse. They're fucking. They're incredibly destructive, in this in the sense of like, no, you shouldn't be looking at other people to satisfy that shit. You should be getting it for yourself. You should be trying to. You should be ultimately your own person. You're an individual, dude. Fix it yourself. Don't rely on other people. When people are fat phobic, you got some shit on your shirt, dude. What is that? Okay. On this platform, you should be uncomfortable. You should be uncomfortable. <laughs> it is irresponsible to come on an app. Why an app? Where there are vulnerable young people. It doesn't, it doesn't make it more impactful when you have 15 second pauses. It just makes it like, it, it makes it awkward. It makes it awkward, dude. And by the way, there are, I don't know, young, vulnerable people everywhere. So does that mean that you should never say anything about anything because those people might or might not take it offensively? 
what is the logic, dude? What the fuck are you talking about, man? If you can't handle the heat, get out the kitchen. And I get it. If you're a child, maybe you don't know how to. That's fine. But if we're talking about like adults, dude, you don't have to be here. You can fucking leave. I don't know if I can tell you. If you are there and you're absorbing the information and you're getting hurt by it, I don't know what to tell you. That's not my fault. You're the fucking one. I don't know, man. You should, like, these people, man, it's like, they find every excuse not to take accountability and then, like, try to put that accountability on someone else so often. It just ends up being so cringy because you're not actually saying anything of value. You're just speaking on bullshit. And be so fat phobic. Dude, get over it. I don't know. What the fuck you want from me, Diddle? Somebody's dying of obesity and you want me to sit there and just not say anything at all because it might offend them or some other people reading that comment? What the fuck are you talking about? What am I? Why do I have to contour my speech because somebody might be offended? By the way, what you're saying right now is equally in that same bracket. So, like, when you say your words, you're also offending somebody. You know that, right? So, like, don't think that you're a better person or you're, like, you're taking the moral high ground here because you think that your words are more valuable or less offensive than the words I'm speaking. That is not how that works. Your words are going to be interpreted just as equally as offensive as mine are. The difference is you're just speaking from a different podium to spread such hate and harm you, you you can think of it as hate and harm but other people don't think of it as hate and harm it could be motivation it could be the means at which you you change your life it doesn't have to be hate and harm just just because you get better words just get better words man and do it under the guise of caring about people and making it about people not caring about themselves yeah 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 you don't get to do that Bro, if you're if you're obese, you're you're literally suffering. And if I'm, I understand that it might be uncomfortable to hear things. But if you're posting yourself on a public platform, thinking that you're not going to get pushback for anything or everything that you're saying or doing, is retarded. It's dumb. It's not possible. I don't know what to tell you. You might get lucky, and you might get people that might say something to you, or you might get people that say nice things to you. But why the fuck would you bank on that? Why would you bank on? having nice people that are going to say things about you that are nice all the time isn't that less un isn't that more unlikely compared to the other thing which is having people that are going to say mean things to you should you should go into it expecting that expecting people to say mean things for you and when you get the nice responses great awesome and it's money it might not even be a good thing by the way to have people complimenting you on things that is obviously unhealthy behaviors that actually might be bad that actually probably is bad that's like having a drug addiction and having somebody sitting there going this is great this is awesome you're doing the right thing they're enabling you that's not a good thing by the way okay it's probably better to have somebody that's at least going to tell you the truth though it may be in a derogatory way at least you get the truth you understand so like even though i understand that you're saying that it's hateful and it's wrong and it's not something that people should do because they might offend somebody that's a retarded point that doesn't make any fucking sense because all the things you can say, I can equally say about you. And I can probably back up my claim even more because your point of saying something that's bad is not good can easily be flipped on its head by saying this thing that's bad is probably good depending on what you're talking about. And when we're talking about the spectrum of obesity, it's probably a better thing. So no, and, no. and I don't care about your like 15 second pauses and this, this thing right here. I don't know. I, I don't care about this. Stop fucking looking at me, dude. What do you want? And it's tolerated too much. What are you talking to me? Like, you're talking to me as I'm like, I'm a nine-year-old or something like that. I'm sitting in one of those like cubby seats and you're my fucking teacher and I did something wrong. I peed on the fucking floor over there and you're upset with me because of that shit. The angle of this camera, like you're looking down upon me. I don't like this shit and the way that you're talking to me, dude. Okay, it's super condescending. You understand? I don't know. It just doesn't seem right to me personally. I don't like it. It makes me feel... This per it, 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 subconsciously, I'm feeling like this person is looking down on me. I didn't do anything. And it's tolerated too much. <laughs> that gut is tolerated too much. And it's made light of heart too much. Wah, wah. Fat phobia should make you uncomfortable because it is intertwined with every single other system of oppression that exists. It's like the most exercise you got, dude. It is related to sexism, racism, homophobia, xenophobia. What else is there? What else is it? Like, what else can we throw in there, huh? Like animal abuse, throw some animal abuse in there. What about ageism? Throw ageism in there too. You know what, dude? Fucking stack up other things too. Why not? I mean, at this point, you might as well just keep going. 
Because you did oh, sexism, racism, ableism, fucking, why not just throw in all, any word that you can put ism at the end of it, just do it. Waterism, lightism, whatever, dude. Fucking breadism, spoonism, just throw things in. It doesn't fucking matter. You're just saying words that don't mean anything. And like, how do you relate these things, by the way? And when you hear somebody saying these words and they go, this is related to this and this and this and this and this, you lose so many people because like, okay, fat phobia. All right. Not good in the sense of like, you shouldn't be commenting on other people's appearances in a negative way and this and this and this. But then when you go, it's related to sexism, homophobia is home and people are just like what how what are you talking what really what the fuck are you talking you're losing people there's no way nobody's thinking like that and the way they think about that right and how they get to these points is like they have this like spider web right they have a spider web of how these all things are connected. You ever see like those old FBI fucking billboards they would have and they would have like the, the head honcho and they would have like all these lines connected to all these things. That is how they look at fat phobia, ableism, fucking sexism, racism, all this other bullshit. That's them. That's how they connect that shit. And like the way they explain it is like, oh my God, it's so bad. It's like, oh, how is fat phobia rooted in racism oh well fat phobia fat phobia is rooted in racism because there was this one guy in the 1850s and he said this about this and then that led to this this this, this long d diatribe of things and you know uh the the, the redlining of black people and th seeing black bodies as ugly and fat and inferior and then having that transcended to the early 20th century and then it's like bro it just you're losing so many people because if you have to have an entire dialogue describing how this is related to that in this very deep intricate way that no Nobody's ever thought about ever. That's not, that doesn't make any sense to most people. Most people are going to look at that and go like, okay, uh, you lost me. I'm leaving. That's how it's going to be. You need better words and you need a more direct way of relaying this message because like, otherwise it's just getting lost. It's, it really is. It doesn't make any sense how you can relate all these things together and then somehow like have that be suited to most people. It's too hard to digest. Classism. Don't you keep going. And so when you talk about one, you talk about it all. That doesn't make any fucking sense, dude. That, if I'm sitting here, oh my God. So you're telling me if I go obesity is bad, I'm also racist. I'm also sexist. I'm also classist. I'm also ageist. I'm also homophobic. Damn, bro. I'm a bad fucking person, dude. Really? I had no, I had no idea that I was all of these bad, disgusting things. <laughs> I just thought that I just thought that guts were not the best. I'm sorry that I don't. So I guess I just don't like gay people and black people and lesbians and old people. Man, oh, I'm a bad person. I can't believe it. Do you see how dumb that sounds? <laughs> you see how fucking stupid that sounds, dude? No, that's not the truth. You just have an issue with this one thing. And that's the problem of relating all this shit in your spider web of fucking terrible information and so when you talk about one you talk about it all which is why i say it is irresponsible yeah disrespectful yeah and hateful uh. to come on this app yes and be fat phobic oh slay 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 say it she ate she ate she ate right there oh man she ate and she ate all the time and that is all I have to say on the matter. I mean, you said a lot. And you know what? I think there was more pauses than there were actual words. And I think you should feel terrible about that. Because I've already said too much on the matter. Is that your hip or what? What is that you're holding your hand on? And people are not uncomfortable enough for me. <laughs> They're too comfortable. Okay. And I know it talked about ushering people to their seats sitting people down but i need you all to get up out of your seats and stop being so it, it might be a little hard to get out of the seats for some people you know i think that might be a poor i think that might have been a poor uh use of words there if i'm being honest a little bit i think that maybe we should have used better words roll out of the sitting seat. people down but i need you all to get up out of your seats and stop being so complicit and complacent when it comes to fat phobia stand up and show up what if somebody was like in a wheelchair, dude? You're being ableist right now, okay? You're being fucking, oh, you just told me that I'm ableist and you just told the person with no legs to stand up? How, oh, man, the audacity. You saying that about this person in a wheelchair, no less? Mm.
You should feel ashamed for yourself. He can't stand up. Professor X can't stand up. How dare you? Learn something. And to learn, you need to un- Oh, man, that's funny, dude. That's funny. I need to learn something, huh? I need to learn something. All right. I think these, the people, it's funny hearing somebody tell you that they, that I need to learn something or you need to learn something when these people are literally incapable of hearing any other words besides their own. Learn something. And to learn, you need to unlearn. That's hilarious. That, that is, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Oh my God. And it shouldn't be on us to teach you. Then who else, dude? What do you, if you had a problem, why is it on me to... You have the claim. You're supposed to supply the information. You understand? Like, if you're saying something and you disagree with what, what, what common knowledge is, why should it be up to me to find out why when you're the one making the fucking claim? Why is the onus on me? That doesn't make any fucking sense. And I'm sick of these people saying, like, things ought to be a particular type of way because they interpret the world in a different way than most fucking people. You're not cool because you think of the world differently than most people. You're just fucking dumb. It's stupid. Your, your idea of how things should work is not set in reality, and it's probably ridiculously harmful compared to what the, the majority of people are doing already. So I fund, not only do I fundamentally disagree with you, but I think what you're doing is more harmful than what's going on now. But it is on you. Oh, what's on me? Hold up. What do I got? Is it on me? Where is it on me? I don't see it. To stop spewing hateful, false, fatphobic rhetoric. Interesting. And furthermore, being tolerable of it. I'm sorry that I'm a tolerant individual, dude. This person, dude. I love Sammy. She has like so much music videos now on her on her thing. You know when you scroll through a particular TikToker and they do like one thing and they just do that one thing like a billion times and then like you go on the click on the channel, you just scroll and it's like the same song 90 different times. You're just doing it. Scroll, 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 scroll. It's the same fucking song. They're just doing the same thing to like the, you know what I'm talking about? I clicked on her channel just to see what she was doing recently and it was that. She has a song, I guess. She just released a song and I, I don't know if it's really that good. I didn't really listen to it too much. I think it's about fat people. I don't know. But she has a song and it's just like the top like 10 15 videos on her thing it's like really annoying to like okay yeah okay song song okay song okay and you're singing your song on the street okay oh you're singing your song in an art gallery okay yeah so, so damn how many fucking songs like how many times can i listen to this one fucking song you know it's like fucking diversity or some shit like that right i don't know man throw some diversity in your fucking music i don't know like, have different songs or something i don't know man it's weird it's it's uh, it's uncanny to keep scrolling and just have 10 15 videos all be this one song but you're just like dancing in the street not actually dancing you're just kind of walking sassily on the fucking street listening to this fucking song that you made yeah black women fat women cool and stuff you already know what i do i take it in the butt i don't know it doesn't matter it doesn't matter dude okay we're getting the video here okay we're getting the video here um if you enjoyed today's video i appreciate it very much leave a like comment subscribe sharing the video I have memberships. You want you could be a member of my channel if you want to. Hit the bell notification so you know when I upload videos. I do it every day at 1 p.m. depending on where you're from. Um, so it could be different time frame wise. But anyway, I'm on East Coast, so it's 1 p.m. here. So anyway, we're gonna end the video here. If you watch the video in its entirety and you're here right now, however you got here, you lovely, amazing, beautiful, spectacular person that I'm looking at right now. Leave it down below by typing in Windows because I think Windows are, I think they deserve more cred. I think they deserve more street cred than what they get. You look outside of them, they have screens on them, they're glass, they look cool sometimes depending on what kind of windows they are. You ever been to a church? I don't really like churches too much because they kind of creep me out a little bit when I go inside. And I, I used to go to church quite a bit when I was a kid, but I like the windows at churches and they're beautiful, super amazing. I think that for a long time, church windows were great, but sometimes now when you walk by them, I feel like we took away the novelty of it because they coat them in like plexiglass because they don't want to be destroyed and you don't want somebody to toss a rock through them or something like that, which people do, which is crazy. I don't know why so many people do that, but I see these windows now they're being covered in plexiglass and they take away a lot of the desirability, a lot of the satisfaction I've seen of these beautiful windows because they're being coated, but I understand why they're doing it. And I just really hate that people are terrible, disgusting human beings that will, they, they will break this beautiful art. You know, I fucking hate that shit. It makes me hurt so deeply inside, but it is what it is, right? Sometimes I like it when people um, dis dis disrespect um, pieces of art, right? Because sometimes here where I live, right, there's like statues of old people that have died 200 years ago. 
and those those people were cool like founding fathers and stuff like that yes i know they had slaves yes i know they were bad people in the spectrum yes okay but they were still cool in the spectrum of like dude look they made the fucking country they fought in this great american war and stuff like that anyway so you'll go and whenever like the team here wins the baseball or something like that i don't really watch sports so what you'll see is like you'll see a whole bunch of guys just putting like hats and like jerseys on these fucking statues and shit like that and it's fucking awesome it's great and then the fucking um i don't know city ordinance has to come through and clean up the fucking statue and like the next day it's just back back on there it's great it's fucking awesome it's always like an asian guy uh, that's blind with like a violin playing next to it with a cup with a jar with money in it. It's awesome, dude. It's fucking great. Come, dude, go to Boston in the summertime and go to the commons. It's fucking awesome, dude. You, you see the weirdest shit. You'll see homeless guys sleeping on benches with squirrels on them. You'll see old women like fucking talking shit to those same squirrels saying that they're bitches and hoes and you'll find a, a large demographic of people that are just fucking cool that are not really doing anything at all they're just walking around enjoying the sun enjoying the ducks it's great it's super it's like one of my favorite things about massachusetts it's like the, the the demographic of people that you see and the structures of the buildings it's like so diverse like you you go downtown you'll see people you'll see buildings that have like made 200 years ago right next to buildings that were made in the 90s like these giant skyscrapers and you're like this is fucking cool this is like you're living in a fairy tale land you know like a mixture between old and new and it's beautiful and the same thing could be said with people beautiful people amazing people not always sometimes people are kind of assholes but it's all right because nobody's perfect um unless we're talking about you of course obviously but i think that the idea of people is it's a beautiful thing you know it's a beautiful thing that everybody's unique and specimens and have they all they all have their own opinions and they wear weird clothes and stuff like that and it's weird but it's cool and i like that i wouldn't have it any other way you know uh anyway you're beautiful you're spectacular you smell amazing today i want to lick your armpit because i know that if you licked an armpit organically, it wouldn't taste very good. It wouldn't, unless you're fresh out the shower. Licking an armpit is not sustainable. But for you, I know it would be sustainable because it probably would taste delightful, delectable. De it would be a delicacy beyond proportions. And I love your, arm your, your armpits and your eyebrows. And I have to tell you that I am addicted. I'm addicted to those things. And I have to tell you how much I love them. I love them so much that the idea of love doesn't even comprehend to the actual word that I'm trying to describe. I think it's far superior to love. I think it's beyond that that of love. I think it's whatever word we can use that would be higher than love, that's what I have. But probably four or five words higher than that, if that makes any sense. On the elevation chart, that's where I have for you and your eyebrows and your armpits and your kneecaps and your shoulders and your toenails too of course your toenails you take care of them so well they're so well lubricated i love that you drink water and you continue to be amazing every single day thank you for being here you beautiful specimen of human being if i could kiss you on the forehead and tell you good night i would anyway if you want to check out my social media it'll be linked down below in the description it's just my instagram and my twitter or x whatever you want to call it uh if you want to follow me on any of those things you can go ahead and do that enjoy the rest of your day guys